Throughout US history, the country has been dominated by an urbanized string of cities stretching along the east coast of the northeastern United States. Home to a stunning 52 million people, an enormous chunk of the US population, the megalopolis, as it's referred to, has guided and exerted influence over much of American culture, history, politics, and business for centuries, and likely will continue to do so as long as it remains the country's urban core. At the center of this string of humanity sits New York City, far and away the largest urban area in the United States, and one of the most populous and famous on Earth. Outside America's megacity, the rest of the state of New York, often overlooked for the highly influential metropolis downstate, contains vast and nearly uninhabited mountain wilderness, beautiful lakes and islands, canals and waterfalls, forests and farms, small towns and important industrial cities. Today only three states surpass New York in population, and whether any do in terms of sheer influence is up for debate. With its skyscraper-studded megacity, a global center of business, immigration, entertainment, and culture, and a large, beautiful upstate stretching from Lake Erie to Lake Champlain, there is truly no place quite like New York, the 11th place I'll cover in the US Explained, a 56-part series on every state, territory, and federal district in the country, by order of admission. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. This is the US Explained, episode 11. New York. According to the Keppen climate classification, most of upstate New York sits in the humid continental climate zone, with four distinct seasons and cold, snowy winters. Located inland far to the north and close to the Great Lakes, the cities of upstate New York usually receive some of the most snow in the United States. In fact, Syracuse gets on average 115 inches of snow every year, more than any other sizable city in the country. On the other hand, the New York City area, sitting on the Atlantic, is in the humid subtropical climate zone with warmer, more mild winters. New York is nicknamed the Empire State, a name that comes from George Washington, who in 1784 said that the state, which at the time was by no means the center of population and influence in the country that it is today, would one day be the seat of empire. The well-known nickname was used to name one of the most famous skyscrapers in the world, New York City's Empire State Building, which reigned for nearly 40 years as the tallest building on Earth. New York is named for James, the Duke of York and Albany, and the future British monarch. James's older brother, King Charles II, gave him the land, formerly the Dutch colony of New Netherland, after the Netherlands surrendered their colonial possessions to Britain, fearing their settlements would be destroyed in the war Britain had declared. There is in fact an Old York. The title Duke of York is itself named for the British city of York, located and lending its name to the region of Yorkshire, and once controlled by Vikings who named it Jorvik, which the name York originates from. New York's flag, like many other state flags, consists of elements of its state seal on a dark blue background. Like a lot of state seals, when you look closely at it, it has an interesting design, showing two women standing beside a depiction of ships crossing the Atlantic and the sun rising over a mountain, complete with a globe with an eagle perched on top above it, and the state's motto, Excelsior, meaning ever upward underneath. Interestingly, in addition, one of the US's mottos, E Pluribus Unum, was added to the flag in 2020 during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic when New York was a major hotspot. However, the fact that so many states have a similar seal on blue background design means that New York's flag is hard to distinguish from the crowd. New York takes up a land area of 47,126 square miles, or 122,057 square kilometers, making it the 27th largest state by area, right about in the middle of the 50 states. However, as many states in the northeastern US are quite small, New York is large compared to its neighbors. In fact, it takes up a greater area than every state it borders. It's home to 20.2 million residents, making it the fourth most populous state in the country and the most populous of the states I've covered so far in this series. 
Only California, Texas, and Florida have more residents within their borders than New York. This massive population, despite the state's fairly large area, gives the state a very high population density of 416 people per square mile or 159 per square kilometer, the seventh highest in the country. New York City, with many residents living in the city's countless high-rise apartments and skyscrapers, packs millions of people into a relatively small area. It's not just the most populous city in the United States, but the most densely populated as well, with 28,491 people per square mile, or 11,000 per square kilometer. No city in the US, home to more than 100,000 residents, has a higher population density than New York City, and most of the smaller cities that surpass it sit within its urban area, such as the suburb across the Hudson of Guttenberg, New Jersey, the most densely populated city of any size in the country. Today, out of the 20 million people who live in New York, 8.8 .8 million live within the city limits of New York City. When the city's suburbs on Long Island and to the north of the city in places like Westchester County are included, that number goes up to 14 million, leaving only 6 million residents in upstate New York. 6 million is a lot of people, more than the populations of plenty of states I've covered so far in this series, but the fact that upstate is home to only 30% of the state's population, despite taking up a lot of land and being home to several fairly large cities, is testament to just how big New York City is, and how much influence it exerts over the state, the region, and the country overall. In fact, if you look just at New York City's urban area, including its suburbs and neighboring Connecticut and New Jersey, but cutting out the population of upstate New York, the city is home to 18.3 million residents. Because of the sheer size of it, estimates vary, with some as high as 23 million residents, more than the entire population of New York State. This would make New York City the fifth most populous urban area in the world, surpassed by only Tokyo, Jakarta, Delhi, and Manila. Depending on which population measurement is used, it is either the most or second most populous urban area in North America, either it or Mexico City. New York sits in the northeastern United States, part of a region called the Mid-Atlantic that typically includes it, along with Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, and Delaware. It's surrounded by water on many sides, home to several major rivers, lakes, and a coast on the Atlantic. New York City sits on a series of islands located where the Hudson River meets the Atlantic, most notably Manhattan Island, Staten Island, and Long Island. Long Island stretches over 100 miles east of Manhattan, and numerous islands located off of it, such as Gardner's Island and Fisher's Island, are part of New York as well. Between it and the mainland sits Long Island Sound, where it shares a water border with Connecticut, which sits on the other side. It even shares a small water border with Rhode Island off the far eastern tip of the island. Four of New York City's five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and the Bronx, sit across either the Hudson River or the various straits and harbors of New York Bay from New Jersey. New York owns most of the islands in the archipelago, regardless of how close they are to their respective mainlands. Staten Island, for example, is part of New York despite sitting much closer to New Jersey than to Brooklyn. Legend says that this was because New York got someone to sail around it in less than 24 hours. While most of the islands are part of New York, the bay is split pretty evenly between the states. This occasionally has resulted in a situation where New York owns an island, but New Jersey owns all the water around it. This is the case, for example, with Liberty Island, where the Statue of Liberty is located, technically making it an exclave of the state. With nearby Ellis Island, the historic center of immigration to the country, through which 12 million immigrants entered the United States, it has led to some controversy. Just like with Liberty Island, Ellis Island was part of New York but sat within New Jersey's waters. New York, however, artificially increased the size of the island several times over to turn it into the immigration processing center that it would become. This led to years of arguments between the states over who Ellis Island belongs to. Finally, in 1998, the Supreme Court stepped in and decided that the land Ellis Island originally took up before New York began reclamation would belong to the Empire State, but that all the newer, artificially expanded land would belong to New Jersey. This gives Ellis Island a very strange border situation in which 83% of it is part of New Jersey and 17% is part of New York. Heading north away from the city, the Hudson acts as the New York-New Jersey border for 25 miles or 41 kilometers until a spot near the suburb of Hastings on Hudson where it makes a turn towards the northwest and heads diagonally for 
48 miles or 78 kilometers until it reaches a sharp bend in the Delaware River near the town of Port Jervis. There, the border with New Jersey ends and becomes a border with Pennsylvania. It follows the Delaware for 68 miles or 109 kilometers upstream, still heading northwest until a spot near the town of Hale Eddy, where the border turns to a horizontal line following the 42nd parallel. The New York-Pennsylvania border follows this line west for 226 miles or 363 kilometers before turning to the north, where it becomes a north-south border until it reaches Lake Erie. New York's coast on Lake Erie continues northeast to Buffalo, the state's second largest urban area, where the lake empties into the Niagara River. Across the river sits the Niagara Peninsula belonging to the Canadian province of Ontario. The river splits and later rejoins, forming a large island called Grand Island, which is part of New York. It empties out into Lake Ontario, giving the state a shoreline on two Great Lakes. Interestingly, New York is the only state to have a coast on both a Great Lake and the ocean. The Lake Ontario shoreline heads east and then north until it drains into the St. Lawrence River, which once again forms the New York-Ontario border, heading northeast. An archipelago called the Thousand Islands, located in the enormous river, is divided between the two countries. Near the town of St. Regis, across the river from the Canadian city of Cornwall, the border leaves the river and turns to the east, becoming a border with Quebec, and follows the 45th parallel for 64 miles or 103 kilometers until it reaches the shores of Lake Champlain. It then follows the lake shore south, with Vermont sitting across the water and owning most of the lake's islands, though some are part of New York. The New York-Vermont border follows the massive lake and its tributary river south until the town of Whitehall, where it then follows a north-south line for 53 miles or 85 kilometers before changing to a border with Massachusetts. The Massachusetts border cuts slightly diagonally to the southwest for 48 miles or 78 kilometers until it becomes a border with Connecticut, which heads less sharply in the same direction before creating a panhandle not far from New York City, meeting Long Island Sound at the suburb of Port Chester. New York City developed around one of the best harbors on the East Coast. New York Bay, split into an upper and lower bay by a strait known as the Narrows, is sheltered by both the mainlands of New York and New Jersey, along with a number of large islands, most notably Long Island, Manhattan Island, and Staten Island. Many smaller islands, such as Governor's Island, Roosevelt Island, and the prison island of Rikers Island, dot the harbor and the rivers that feed into it. The Harlem River splits off of the Hudson around the north end of Manhattan and then meets the East River, essentially a narrowing of Long Island Sound that forms a strait between Manhattan and Long Island. Only one borough of New York City, the Bronx, sits on the state's mainland, with Manhattan and Staten Island occupying individual islands and Brooklyn and Queens both sitting on Long Island's western end. The largest island in the contiguous United States, the most populous in the country overall, and the 18th most populous on Earth, Long Island is home to 7.8 million people, more than the entirety of upstate New York, as well as islands like Ireland, Puerto Rico, and Jamaica. Though heavily influenced by the city, Long Island is really a unique region on its own. I'll discuss Brooklyn and Queens, the two most populous boroughs of New York City, later on in the video, but beyond the city limits, Long Island is mostly suburban. Once rural and agricultural, as the city grew and expanded, it became a heavily suburbanized residential island, though rural areas still exist on the far eastern part of the island, which includes pine barrens similar to those in New Jersey. Most Long Islanders commute by train into jobs into the city. Levittown, where identical houses and streets stretch for miles, is a post-World War II development that is often used as an example of suburbia at its most extreme. However, plenty of Long Island towns, though suburban, have their own unique history and character. Today, all four of the island's counties, Kings, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk, are home to over one million residents. Much of the island outside the city is quite well off, with rich New York families building mansions and yacht clubs along the coast, though especially closer to the city, there are plenty of middle class and low income suburbs as well. A collection of towns on the island's far eastern end, known as the Hamptons, are a famous vacation destination for wealthy Manhattan residents in the summer. Other well-known Long Island towns like Sag Harbor and Montauk on the island's eastern tip, home to its famous lighthouse, are major tourist destinations as well. 
Long Island is also unique politically in that the eastern part often tends to support the Republican Party, with many of its wealthier residents voting Republican for lower taxes. A local food is the BECSPK, which stands for bacon, egg, cheese, salt, pepper, and ketchup on a roll. On the mainland north of the Bronx, Westchester and Rockland counties are both usually considered, along with New York City and Long Island, to be part of downstate New York, a region that basically amounts to the city and its suburbs. Because New York City is so big, its closer suburbs are often very urbanized and less solely residential, home to businesses, factories, and apartment complexes. They're also often much more diverse than typical American suburbs, as well as those further from the city, and are easily connected to it by public transit and commuter rail lines. This is the case with several of Westchester County's neighboring suburbs, such as New Rochelle, Mount Vernon, and Yonkers, New York's third most populous city. Further from the city, Westchester and Rockland counties, home to combined 1.2 million people, are home to a vast stretch of wealthy and upper middle class suburbs, many sitting along the Hudson. As the city's suburbs fade into rural areas, the Hudson Valley remains an important center of population. The lowest gap in the mountainous Appalachians or Appalachians, the pronunciation really depends on where you live, it's long been a center of agriculture and an easily navigable path inland to the country's interior that has contributed significantly to New York's growth and prosperity. The valley is hemmed in by two ranges of the Appalachians. To the east are the Taconics, a range known in Massachusetts as the Berkshires and in Vermont as the Green Mountains. The Catskills lie to the west, a mountain range set aside as Catskill Park that, not too far from the city, is a popular getaway for city dwellers hoping to spend more time in nature. Smaller, riverside cities like Newburgh, Poughkeepsie, and Kingston line the Hudson, as do vast wealthy country estates such as those of Cornelius Vanderbilt and Franklin Delano Roosevelt in Hyde Park. West Point, the United States Military Academy, sits along the river just to the south of Newburgh. Poughkeepsie and Newburgh are together home to around 423,000 people, putting them just ahead of Syracuse as the state's fifth largest urban area. The valley splits into two toward the center of the state, with the Hudson flowing south from its headwaters in the Adirondacks and its main tributary, the Mohawk River, feeding into it from the west. Low-lying valleys and mountain passes make Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River, which flows into it, easily accessible from the upper reaches of the Hudson Valley. The Mohawk Valley, in turn, provides the easiest pass across the Appalachians through the entire mountain range, which allowed settlers and traders to access the flat plains along Lake Ontario and the Midwest beyond. The area around the confluence of the Hudson and Mohawk Rivers was home to a number of important upstate cities, including Schenectady, Troy, New York's capital city of Albany, and further north, Saratoga Springs. This region, sometimes referred to as the Capital District, is collectively home to around 1.1 million residents, just under 600,000 of whom live in the Albany area, making it the state's fourth largest urban area. It sits at the eastern end of a string of upstate cities called the Northern Tier, whose growth and development has followed the Erie Canal. The canal, built in the 1820s, stretches from Albany to Buffalo, passing through the Mohawk Valley and the flat plains alongside Lake Ontario to Lake Erie, connecting the Great Lakes in the agricultural Midwest to the Hudson River and New York City's excellent harbor, allowing agricultural and industrial products to be shipped cheaply and quickly around the world in bulk. The canal enabled New York City to turn into the massive powerhouse of trade and finance it is today, and canal-side towns upstate to grow into the major cities of the northern tier, building factories and mills alongside waterfalls and ports on the Great Lakes, where crops grown in upstate New York or further up the Great Lakes could be milled in the flour and shipped out on the canal. In the upper reaches of the Mohawk Valley, upstream and west of Albany, the cities of Utica and Rome, together in an urban area of around 117,000, sit alongside the canal, powered by the growth and industry it brought to the area. But today, like in much of upstate New York, industrial decline, specifically in the textile industry which powered them, has led the cities to struggle and lose population and jobs. The cities, along with many others in central New York, such as Ithaca and Syracuse, are named for ancient Greek and Roman locations, many of which were named by a man named James Harper, who was interested in classical history. To the north of Utica and Albany sit the Adirondack Mountains, a tall, wild, and sparsely populated section of the Appalachians. They're home to Mount Marcy, the highest point in the state, and are set aside as Adirondack Park, the largest state park in the United States, taking up more land than Glacier, Olympic, 
Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, and Yosemite National Parks put together. The vast northern swath of New York that the Adirondacks are located in, despite taking up much of the state, is however only home to just over half a million residents. One county in the heart of the mountains, Hamilton County, is home to only 4,416 people, making it the least populous county in the northeastern U.S. and one of the least populous in any East Coast state. Secluded and rural, with the cold weather and mountainous terrain, making agriculture and settlement incredibly challenging, the Adirondacks have been mostly free from the heavy industrialization and development, and remain one of the rare wild places left on the East Coast. Their spectacular scenery has made them a major draw for tourism and winter sports, and the town of Lake Placid has been home to the Winter Olympics twice, both in 1932 and 1980, as of now one of just eight cities in the world to host more than one Olympic Games. Lumber is a major industry in the vast forest-covered mountain range, and just as in the neighboring Vermont, syrup is produced from the sap tapped from maple trees. The Adirondack chair originated in the Adirondacks in the town of Westport on Lake Champlain. While much of upstate New York is of German and Irish ancestry, descendants of immigrants who came through Ellis Island in the late 1800s and early 1900s seeking jobs in the industrial cities of the northern tier, the far north of New York, as is true throughout neighboring counties bordering Quebec and Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, is predominantly French-Canadian. Smaller cities like Watertown, not far from Lake Ontario's eastern shore, Ogdensburg, located on the St. Lawrence, Glens Falls on the Hudson, and Plattsburgh, sitting on Lake Champlain across from Vermont, dot the flatter edges of northern New York. Lake Champlain, as well as the St. Lawrence River and its Thousand Islands, provide more beautiful scenery to the region. West of Rome and Utica, central New York is dominated by lakes, including the large Oneida Lake and a string of 11 long, thin glacial lakes named the Finger Lakes as they resemble fingers on a hand. The lakes, some of the deepest in the country, cut into the hilly Allegheny Plateau to the south, a beautiful region that is a major vacation destination. Just as with the Catskills and Adirondacks, with so many millions of people packed tightly into New York City, residents are often eager to get out of the city and spend time in nature and the countryside, giving areas like the Finger Lakes a near endless supply of tourists and vacationers. Much of central New York is farmland, home to dairy farms, orchards around Lake Ontario, and vineyards along the Finger Lakes that have in turn been another draw for tourists. On the southern tip of Cayuga Lake, the second largest of the Finger Lakes, sits Ithaca, a smaller city best known as the home of Cornell University. The southern shore of Onondaga Lake, a small lake just east of the Finger Lakes, is home to Syracuse, another formerly industrial city that grew with the creation of the Erie Canal and the fourth largest urban area in the state. West of the Finger Lakes, the Genesee River cuts north from the Allegheny Plateau, creating a fertile agricultural valley. Where the river meets the Erie Canal and Lake Ontario sits the city of Rochester, New York's third largest urban area and the 60th largest in the country, home to 720,000 people in the city and its suburbs. The cities of the northern tier end at Buffalo, the western end of the Erie Canal, which sits where Lake Erie empties out into the Niagara River, just upstream of the world-famous Niagara Falls. Out of the 10 most visited tourist attractions in the world, four are located in New York. Niagara Falls is the only one of the four located outside New York City. With visitors, especially couples on their honeymoons, traveling to the area from across the US and the world to visit the spectacular falls. The surrounding area is heavily urbanized on both sides of the US-Canada border. Buffalo is New York's second most populous urban area and the 46th most populous in the country, home to 936,000 people in it and its surrounding suburbs. Just a few miles north, the city of Niagara Falls is also one of New York's largest. Just across the river, Ontario's city of the same name is even larger, and another major Canadian city, St. Catharines, sits on the Welland Canal, built to connect Lake Erie and Lake Ontario to shipping, which Niagara Falls had, for obvious reasons, made impossible. Overshadowed by the giant metropolis that is New York City, it can be easy to forget that the upstate cities of Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany are all quite large and significant, and would each exert significantly more influence if located in other, less populated states. Finally, south of the string of upstate cities sits New York's more sparsely populated southern tier. This part of the state is hilly and forested, dominated by the Appalachian's Allegheny Plateau, which stretches into it from Pennsylvania. 
Most of its rivers, such as the Allegheny and Susquehanna, flow south into Pennsylvania, and the southern tier, which makes up the northern end of the cultural region known as Appalachia, is geographically hard to distinguish from its neighbor to the south. Its three largest cities, Jamestown in the west, and Elmira as well as Binghamton, further to the east and home to 158,000 people, are all located in tight river valleys surrounded by the hilly plateau, and each just sits miles from the Pennsylvania border. The region as a whole has also suffered from the effects of deindustrialization and the loss of manufacturing jobs. What is today New York was originally home to many indigenous peoples. Algonquian nations dominated the eastern half of the state with the Lenape, sometimes called the Delaware, inhabiting much of the coast, islands, and downstate mainland where New York City is today. Other Algonquian people, the Mohicans, live further to the north in the Hudson Valley. The rest of the state was inhabited by Iroquois peoples, with the Mohawk living in the Mohawk Valley in the Adirondacks, the Oneida further to the west, the Onondaga and Cayuga in the Finger Lakes, the Seneca in the Genesee Valley, and the Wenro around the Niagara Falls area where Buffalo is today. The Erie and Susquehannock, other Iroquois peoples mostly located in what is now Pennsylvania, inhabited the southern tier. As European colonists began settling in North America, they brought with them deadly diseases such as smallpox that Native Americans had not been exposed to, which ended up decimating the continent's indigenous peoples and killing 90% of them. Those that survived often died at the hands of colonists as European settlements pushed further westward. The Iroquois nations of western New York, however, acted as a powerful force in the region for hundreds of years, joining together to form a political union called the Haudenosaunee, or Iroquois Confederacy, that formed trading partnerships with colonial powers and maintained firm control of their territory, blocking colonists from settling further west than Fort Stanwix, where Rome is located today. As the fur trade increased their wealth and power, the Haudenosaunee invaded neighboring tribes, looking to expand their area of control, at times going as far as Michigan and Virginia. These conquests, known as the Beaver Wars, were all that many tribes, already devastated by disease and colonial expansion, could take. Entire peoples were wiped out, and refugees often poured into Haudenosaunee lands, where they were absorbed into the Iroquois Confederacy. Though New York Harbor was initially explored by Giovanni de Verrazzano, who was doing so for France, and though French settlers from Quebec attempted to build a settlement in the Hudson Valley, the first European power to begin colonizing what is now New York was the Netherlands. Henry Hudson sailed into New York Harbor and up the river, which was then named for him, for the Dutch East India Company in 1609. Soon after, the Netherlands began founding trading posts along the river, Fort Orange south of the confluence of the Mohawk and Hudson Rivers, and Fort Amsterdam was founded in 1625 on the southern tip of Manhattan Island. Towns began to grow around each, named Beaverwick and New Amsterdam, respectively. The Dutch began trying to settle the colony, known as New Netherland, by offering up large chunks of land in the Hudson Valley. Wealthy Dutch families bought massive estates, known as patroonships, which they leased out to farmers to farm in an almost feudal system. The most famous was Rensselaerwick, owned by the powerful Van Rensselaer family. New Amsterdam, the colonial capital, was a small town, but located in an excellent port, the Dutch city attracted immigrants from not just the Netherlands, but all over Europe, and New Netherland built new towns in the area, such as Pavonia across the Hudson, now known as Jersey City, Harlem on the north end of Manhattan, and Brooklyn on Long Island. Many Dutch street names from New Amsterdam still exist in New York City, such as Broadway and Wall Street, which ran alongside the city wall, and many Dutch place names are still in use throughout the state and New York City area. Several straits, for example, use the Dutch word kill. The body of water formed by the widening of the Hudson north of the city is called the Tappan Zee, a combination of Lenape and Dutch words, and numerous counties and locations in the New York metro area, such as Bergen County, New Jersey, Staten Island, and Nassau County on Long Island, as well as the island's name itself, are taken from Dutch words. New Netherland, which had expanded to the south, conquering New Sweden, which sat alongside the Delaware River and was now the Delaware in Pennsylvania, was viewed by Britain as a growing threat. In addition, the presence of the colony divided British control of North America in two, separating the colonies of New England from the rest of the British colonies further to the south. In 1664, British King Charles II declared war on the Netherlands and seized the colony, which was largely given up without a fight, as residents did not want to see their settlements destroyed. 
Though briefly recaptured, New Netherland was in British control and was divided into New York, New Jersey, and later Pennsylvania and Delaware. New York was given to Charles's brother, James, the Duke of York and Albany. Beaverwick was renamed Albany and New Amsterdam became New York City. The colony maintained the Dutch patroonship system where rich families owned vast sections of farmland, leasing out plots to tenant farmers and taking a cut of the money. English settlers had come to the colonies with the hopes of owning their own land, and were not eager to work as tenant farmers. As such, population growth in the colony was very slow, and it remained relatively rural, the Hudson Valley home to mostly a few wealthy Dutch and English families. New York City, too, remained smaller than other colonial cities like Boston and Philadelphia. New York was home to some of the Revolutionary War's most important battles. In fact, a third of all the war's battles took place in the colony. Continental troops took Fort Ticonderoga, located on Lake Champlain, which helped push British troops out of Boston. The Battle of Long Island, the war's largest battle, saw British troops take New York City, from which they would go on to wage the rest of the war, and the surprise American victory at Saratoga brought France into the conflict, helping tip the scales toward the revolutionaries. Many Iroquois nations had sided with Britain, and during the war, American troops invaded and laid waste to Haudenosaunee lands pushing many Iroquois west into British-controlled Ontario, breaking the power of the once mighty Iroquois Confederacy. After the war, the former colonies were governed by the Articles of Confederation, which tied them together in a loosely connected union, and named New York City as the capital until it was moved to Philadelphia in 1790. With the Articles of Confederation largely unsuccessful, the Constitution was written in response. On July 26, 1788, New York ratified it, becoming the 11th state to join the United States. As it was the capital, George Washington was sworn into office in New York City in the country's first presidential inauguration, and the Bill of Rights were written there. The state's first governor, George Clinton, ended the patroonship system, breaking up some of the large Hudson Valley estates. In addition, with the Iroquois forced into Canada, New York now had possession of lots of land west of the Mohawk Valley. Settlers flooded in from New England, and towns began springing up across upstate New York. Clinton's nephew, DeWitt Clinton, was later governor himself, and he championed construction of the Erie Canal, a massive undertaking that changed the state forever. It's hard to overstate the Erie Canal's impact on New York. It allowed vast quantities of goods and resources to be transported easily, quickly, inexpensively, and in bulk from the Midwest to the Atlantic via New York City, where they could then be sold all over the world. The cities of upstate New York, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany, small villages before the canal's construction, were able to process raw materials in their factories and mills and ship the finished products directly onto the canal, making them prime locations for production. New York City was the port that all this shipping went through and became the gateway to the United States, coupling one of the country's best natural harbors with exclusive access to a water route that opened up the entire Midwest and all its agriculture and resources to international trade. Financial companies came into the city to fund and insure all the trade, turning it into a global financial center that it is today. Immigrants poured in from Europe, hoping to find jobs in the fast-growing city and upstate in the industrial centers along the canal, or to settle further west, using the now well-positioned city and the ship and railroad lines emanating from it as a jumping-off point. As soon as the canal was built, New York's population began to skyrocket. The city and the state quickly became the most populous in the United States, a position the state held onto until the mid-20th century and that the city still holds to this day. In 1800, it was still a small city, home to just 79,000 residents. By 1860, it surpassed a million. In 1848, the Finger Lakes town of Seneca Falls was home to an influential women's suffrage convention, which was a major turning point in the push to grant women in the United States the right to vote. Many of the state's inhabitants were enslaved people brought to New York from Africa. New York City especially had a large enslaved population, the second largest in the country. After the end of the Revolutionary War, the state abolished the awful practice, but only did so gradually, meaning that black people were still enslaved in the state up until 1827. Even after abolition within the state, New York City had close economic ties to slavery and was a major importer of southern cotton, which it would process and manufacture into clothing and then export. In its early years of growth, the state was still heavily dependent on it, with cotton products making up half of its exports for a time. Upstate New York, though, was a major center of the abolitionist movement. 
abolitionist leader Frederick Douglass lived in Rochester for a time, where he published the North Star, an influential abolitionist paper. In 1863, with the Civil War raging, New York City was rocked by a disgusting incident known as the Draft Riots. People drafted to fight in the Civil War were, at the time, able to pay to send a replacement, something only wealthy people could afford, whereas poor people had no choice. Many poor Irish immigrants were upset by this, their anger soon taking the form of racism. Not wanting to serve in a war that would bring an end to slavery, they violently attacked the city's black residents, perhaps killing thousands of people. Before and after the Civil War, New York City's status as America's port brought millions of immigrants into the city. Always ethnically diverse, the state had still had, until then, been mostly Dutch and English, but ample job opportunities opened up by trade and manufacturing along the Erie Canal, coupled by disasters in Europe, led to an immigration boom. In the 1840s, Ireland was struck by the devastating potato famine, and Germany by a series of violent revolutions that left millions flocking to the United States from both countries. Steady immigration from Britain continued as well. Many stayed in the city, while others continued upstate and beyond. Today, most residents of upstate New York are descended from these German and Irish immigrants. Many others continued to other parts of the country. In 1892, Ellis Island was designated by the federal government as the main entry point to the U.S. Even before then, two-thirds of all immigrants to the country, 8 million people, had entered through New York City. In the decades to come, another 12 million people would pass through Ellis Island. In fact, a third of all Americans alive today are descended from immigrants who entered the country via Ellis Island. The Statue of Liberty, a gift from France representing ideals of peace, freedom, and democracy, has come to be a symbol of America's status as an immigrant nation, as it was often the first landmark new arrivals to the country could see as their ships pulled into the harbor. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Eastern Europe, predominantly Russia and Poland, became major sources of immigration as well. Many Eastern Europeans who came to New York were Jewish, fleeing persecution back home. Today, New York City has the largest Jewish population in the world outside Tel Aviv. At the same time, waves of Italian immigrants entered the city. Today, Staten Island, along with most of New York's suburban counties as well as those in neighboring Connecticut and New Jersey, are predominantly Italian-American. During the Gilded Age following the Civil War, wealthy robber barons, owners of massive industrial monopolies, banks, and railroads, often had their headquarters in New York. The city's status as a financial and business center continued to grow. Today, many large American and global corporations have their headquarters in Manhattan. In 1898, New York City, formerly consisting just of Manhattan, consolidated with the neighboring city of Brooklyn, also one of the largest cities in the country. The western half of Queens County, the southern portion of Westchester County, known as the Bronx, and Richmond County, located on Staten Island. Still five separate counties, but part of the same city, they became the five boroughs of New York that we know today. During the World Wars, with many people leaving behind manufacturing jobs to serve in the military, millions of black southerners headed north with the hopes of filling these jobs in what was known as the Great Migration, fleeing the racial persecution and low-paying sharecropper jobs of the Jim Crow South. Many came to New York, heading to both upstate cities and New York City itself, which became home to the largest black population on the continent. Harlem, a neighborhood on the north end of Manhattan, became the center of New York's black community. It was home to the Harlem Renaissance, in which black art, music, and literature flourished. The city became home to a major jazz scene, with famous musicians like Duke Ellington, Dizzy Gillespie, Cab Calloway, and Ella Fitzgerald performing frequently in Harlem, and writers like Langston Hughes rose to national prominence there. In the mid-1900s, immigration from the Caribbean, specifically the Dominican Republic, and migration from the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico brought many more people to the city. Today, more residents of Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx trace their ancestry to the Caribbean than to anywhere else. Towards the later half of the 20th century, immigration continued, with many immigrants moving to the city from Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. During the Civil Rights Movement, Malcolm X built his career in the city, and was assassinated in Harlem's Audubon Ballroom in 1965. In 1969, the Stonewall Inn in Manhattan's Greenwich Village neighborhood was home to a series of riots in response to a police raid that marked the beginning of the modern LGBTQ rights movement. On September 11, 2001, terrorists flew four hijacked planes into the United States, killing nearly 3,000 people. 
The twin towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan were one of their targets. The skyscrapers, New York landmarks that were the tallest in the city, collapsed, killing 2,606 people, the vast majority of those who died that day. The tragic attacks left a lasting impact on the city and its residents. Today, Ground Zero is home to two reflecting pools where the buildings once stood, with the names of the victims commemorated around the edge. Every year on the anniversary of the attacks, two beams of light are sent up from the reflecting pools over the city. Today, not far from Ground Zero, a new World Trade Center stands, One World Trade Center, which at 1776 feet tall, a height representing the year the US was founded, is the tallest building in the United States and one of the tallest in the world. New York's fourth largest urban area, Albany, home to 594,000 residents, sits in the upper reaches of the Hudson Valley, just downstream of its confluence with the Mohawk River. The ending point of the Erie Canal and the furthest navigable point up the Hudson, Albany is the gateway to the Mohawk Valley and has been an essential part of New York's growth and success as a trading giant. An old city, it was founded as the Dutch fur trading post of Beaverwick, and wealthy Dutch patroons like the Rensselaer family lived on vast estates nearby. In fact, the city is, by some standards, the oldest in the United States, being continuously chartered since 1686, longer than any other city in the country. Not too far from other smaller cities like Troy and Schenectady, Albany is the urban anchor for a heavily populated section of the Hudson Valley, and not far from the western Massachusetts and southern Vermont, exerts influence over these rural parts of New England, serving as a regional center. It's been New York's capital city for well over 200 years, and as such plays an important role in American politics, governing the country's fourth most populous state, and balancing the needs and desires of the vast upstate with those of the colossal megacity. The state capitol in Albany is an ornate granite building that is one of, in my opinion, the most beautiful state capitol buildings in the country, lacking the traditional dome that most state houses have, but bringing in a unique design that makes it stand out among capitol buildings. Syracuse, New York's sixth largest urban area, home to 412,000 people, sits on the shores of Onondaga Lake, a small lake not far from the famed Finger Lakes, through which it's connected to the Erie Canal. Nearby salt springs allowed the city to turn into an important center of salt production, and it was named for Syracusa, a Sicilian city also sitting on salt deposits. The city became a major industrial center, but in more recent decades as industrial jobs left the city, the population began to decline, although today it is growing once again. It's perhaps best known as the home of Syracuse University, and is today the urban heart of central New York and the Finger Lakes area. Rochester, New York's third largest urban area, home to 720,000 people, is located at the mouth of the Genesee River, where it flows into Lake Ontario and sits on the Erie Canal. The Genesee Valley became a major wheat growing region and mills in the city would process it into flour, which could then be shipped out on the canal. It became a major flour production center and was nicknamed Flower City. Though a smaller city, Rochester has played an outsized role in American history. Home to Susan B. Anthony, it was a center of the women's suffrage movement, and a major center of the abolitionist movement as well, with Frederick Douglass living there for a time. It was the birthplace of the Second Great Awakening, a major resurgence in Christianity that spread out of Rochester across the country in the 1830s, and ended up influencing the temperance movement which led to prohibition. During the Second Great Awakening, a new religious movement, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, whose followers became known as Mormons, was founded by a man named Joseph Smith in the Finger Lakes town of Fayette, between Rochester and Syracuse. In the 20th century, companies like Eastman Kodak, which made cameras cheap and accessible to amateur photographers, and printing company Xerox grew out of the city, providing stock options and higher wages to employees that turned Rochester into an upper-middle-class, high-earning company town. Today, it's often ranked one of the most livable cities in the United States, though it has a major divide between its rich and poor residents. The city is home to schools like the University of Rochester and the Rochester Institute of Technology. New York's second largest urban area, Buffalo, is home to 935,000 people. The city sits at the end of Lake Erie, where it meets the Niagara River and the Erie Canal, and sits right across the river from the Canadian town of Fort Erie, Ontario. The canal brought growth to the city and quickly transformed it into a major trading and manufacturing center, specifically of grain and steel. Manufacturing, however, has been in decline, and the opening of other waterways like the Welland Canal and St. Lawrence Seaway has left Buffalo struggling, and many companies began moving operations out of the city, resulting in the loss of tens of thousands of jobs. 
Today, Buffalo is considered part of the string of former manufacturing towns known as the Rust Belt. Despite its struggles, it remains an important Great Lake city, and the second largest in the state. It's the birthplace of buffalo wings and buffalo sauce and holds a national buffalo wing festival every year. Buffalo was also the site of President William McKinley's assassination, who was killed well at the city's Pan American Exposition. His vice president, New Yorker Theodore Roosevelt, was sworn in in the city. The largest campus of SUNY, the State University of New York system, is located in Buffalo. Not far to the north, the stunning Niagara Falls are a major tourist destination that sees millions of vacationers visit every year. The falls also helped provide hydroelectric power that made Buffalo one of the early cities in the country to draw its power from a relatively distant location. Its proximity to Canada, specifically the densely populated Ontario Peninsula sitting between the Great Lakes, puts it not far from major Canadian cities like Toronto and makes the highly populated region near Canadian cities like Niagara Falls and St. Catharines a major center of international travel and border crossings. Before we continue, I'm excited to announce a special guest. Tenth and Central Productions is a fan of the channel originally from New York who's going to talk about what it's like to live upstate. Thank you very much. That is interesting. It is a pleasure to be a part of this video, and I would like to take this opportunity to briefly discuss some aspects of life in upstate New York. First, as a person who has lived in multiple states but has spent most of his life living in New York, I had a chance to talk to many people about where I grew up. Indeed, more often than not, when I said I was from New York, the first thing people thought of was New York City. While this popular preconception of identifying New York State as simply an extension of America's largest metropolitan area is no one's fault, it is, however, However, a product of the city's position as a global hub for commerce, politics, education, and popular culture. As a result, people tend to ignore upstate New York, especially since much of its cities like Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany were often classified as being part of the so-called Rust Belt of older industrial cities. Despite these popular preconceptions, upstate New York has plenty to offer someone who wishes to move there. First, we can look at the weather and climate. Unlike states in the Sun Belt, most places in upstate New York have all four seasons to offer. Fans of winter sports will appreciate the state's numerous ski areas, while the more moderate summer months allow for plenty of outdoor activities like hiking, fishing, golfing, mountain biking, and kayaking. And all these activities enable a large tourist trade, which drives much of the economy of an area known as the Great Northern Catskill Mountains. I'm very happy to say that I grew up in this part of the world and got a chance to take part in some of the activities that I mentioned earlier. However, I will not mention which town I grew up in, only that I lived in close proximity to popular winter destinations such as Wyndham Mountain Ski Area and Hunter Mountain Resort. While the Great Northern Catskills are known for its natural beauty, popular resorts, and quiet communities, much of the tourist economy is based on the changing seasons. Thus, full-time employment can be difficult to find in that sector. Growing up, I learned that to live in a tourist-dependent community, one had to wear many different hats or work multiple trades to make a living. Unless, of course, one worked as a lawyer, teacher, a doctor, a banker, or owned a successful business. But thanks to the internet and the COVID-19 pandemic, the rise of remote work and communication platforms like Zoom have made it possible for many people to work at home or at sites away from major cities. In this sense, one can make the argument that the growth of remote work will make it possible for tourist-dependent towns and villages to have more year-round residents. The locals have more business and the newcomers experience rural tranquility without the hustle and bustle of urban life. Yet the Northern Catskills are not at all isolated. Depending upon where one lived in that part of the world, you were still within a two-hour drive of both the capital region and of the greater New York City area. But because New York is a lot more than just the areas I just mentioned, there are plenty of beautiful, scenic, and popular places to visit throughout the state. Who knows, perhaps viewers of this video will, after watching this video, take it upon themselves to visit the Empire State, and maybe even consider staying beyond a simple vacation slash visit. With that, I take my leave and turn the video back over to our friendly narrator. Thank you again, and stay positive. New York City is the largest city in New York and the United States, the core of an urban area home to as much as 23 million people. For decades, it held the title of being the largest city on Earth until it was surpassed by the current largest city, Tokyo, in 1965. And today, only four urban areas are larger than it. It's well known by nicknames like the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, or simply the abbreviation NYC. The city is home to 550 buildings that are more than 330 feet or 100 meters tall, more skyscrapers than any other city in the United States, and more than any other city in the world besides Shenzhen and Hong Kong, even surpassing cities like Dubai. 
It's home to well over 6,400 high rises overall, making it a truly vertical city with many of its residents living in apartment complexes. One of the world's first cities to build skyscrapers, it's home to easily recognizable structures such as the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and One World Trade Center. The thin Central Park Tower is the tallest residential building in the country. The city has been a building ground for countless architectural movements and has still managed to develop its own distinct style. Manhattan is more densely populated than any county, city, or town in the entire United States, packing an incredible 72,000 residents into the average square mile. At that population density, the entire world's population could fit in Nevada. New York's home to not one, but two major clusters of skyscrapers. Lower Manhattan sits on the southern tip of the island where New Amsterdam was located and is home to Wall Street, the city's famed financial district. The larger Midtown sits at the southern end of Central Park, the large landscaped green space in the middle of Manhattan designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. As if Manhattan couldn't contain them all, the city's skyline continues across the East River into Brooklyn and Queens and across the Hudson into Jersey City. It's the most photographed city in the world, and one of, if not the most recognizable. Over 66 million people visit New York City every year, and attractions like Times Square, Central Park, and Grand Central Terminal are all among the most top 10 visited tourist destinations on Earth. Other New York City landmarks such as the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge are instantly recognizable. Home to the headquarters of the United Nations, it is geopolitically one of the world's most important cities. Its neighborhoods such as Harlem, the Lower and Upper East and West Side, Chinatown, Little Italy, Bed-Stuy, Coney Island, Flatbush, Flushing, and Greenwich Village, just to name a few, each have their own distinct character. Broadway, famous for its theaters, has become synonymous with theatrical success. Streets like Park Avenue and Fifth Avenue scream wealth. Madison Avenue is famed for advertising and Wall Street means finance. Madison Square Garden is a world-famous arena and event venue, and the city's home to major annual events like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the New Year's Celebration at Times Square, and the lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Home to a once thriving garment district, it's today a global fashion capital, home to the famous New York Fashion Week. It's an entertainment center to rival Los Angeles, home to not only Broadway, but dozens of late night shows, and has left its mark on the music industry with hip hop starting in the Bronx. Sony Music and Warner Music, two massive record labels, are based out of the city, and far too many influential musicians have come out of there to name. The world's two largest stock exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, are both located in Manhattan. It would be impossible to name all the major corporations headquartered in the city. The sheer number of major corporations with headquarters there have contributed to its status as a center of finance and business. Just to name a few though, New York is the headquarters of companies like Verizon, JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, MetLife, Pfizer, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. It's served by two major airports, LaGuardia and JFK, both located on Long Island. The Port of New York and New Jersey is the third busiest in the country. The city's subway system is massive and has larger and has more stations than any other public transit system on Earth and is the busiest in the Western Hemisphere. Grand Central Terminal, the city's main train station, is the largest in the world. The city is also unique out of American cities for its use of public transportation. While 91% of Americans drive to work, New York is the only city in the US in which most residents don't even own a car, the majority using public transit to commute to work. Manhattan's home to the High Line, an old elevated railroad line that was transformed into a park and trail system. If New York City's boroughs were split up into five individual cities, three of them would still be among the six most populous cities in the country. Manhattan at number six with 1.7 million residents, Queens at number four with 2.4, and Brooklyn at number three with 2.7. The Bronx with its 1.4 million residents would still be in the top 10, and Staten Island, with just under half a million, would still be at a respectable 37th place. The island, which is mostly residential and has a suburban feel, and similar to Long Island, a conservative lean, is still among the country's most populous counties. The Staten Island Ferry takes people between it and Manhattan. The city has a unique and easily distinguishable accent in its own regional dialect called New York City English, with its own slang and pronunciations. New York City remains to this day the largest entrance point for immigration to the United States. 37% of New Yorkers today were born in a different country, the largest immigrant population of any metropolitan area on earth, with 5.8 million people in the greater New York area born in a different country. 
It's also the world's most linguistically diverse city, with well over 800 different languages spoken by its residents. Queens is the most ethnically diverse county in the US and the most diverse urban area on earth. Immigrants often settled in neighborhoods with people from their home country, and dozens of distinct ethnic enclaves are located throughout the city. Because of New York City's unmatched cultural diversity, it's possible to find practically any food there. Some of the city's most famous dishes grew out of New York's immigrant communities. The city's large Italian-American population, for example, created New York-style pizza, a thin crust pizza by the slice, and New Yorkers and Chicagoans constantly argue over which city's style of pizza is better. Delis and bagel shops were brought to the city by Jewish immigrants, and New York is widely considered to have some of the best bagels and pizza, in part due to the water the city uses, which comes from the Catskills. Food carts serving Middle Eastern food are also popular, brought to the city by immigrants from the region. New York City is a connection to Florida, with many city residents moving to the state after they retire, helping give the Sunshine State its high population of elderly residents. The city is home to a renowned educational institutions like Fordham University, NYU, and Columbia, and has been the subject of countless movies, books, and songs, occupying a key place in the human imagination. I'll wrap up the segment on New York City with my good friend Ishan, who's going to talk about what it's like to live in the city. Thank you, Carter, for that. Uh, my name is Ishan. Uh, I was born and raised in the Bronx, and in the South Bronx specifically, and still live there, uh, just out in the Midwest now for college. Um, my parents got to New York. They immigrated there in 1995, um, mostly because it is a coastal city. It's usually where most immigrants end up going to. Um, but I feel like it's, it's, it's a really nice city to be in. But I feel like a lot of New Yorkers would also agree it's a good city to visit for a week or two. There's a lot of things to do, but to live there, it can be kind of rough, especially if you aren't necessarily most well off in terms of income. It is extremely expensive to live there. Honestly, coming to the Midwest and one of the biggest differences that you see is prices. Like I, I'm still getting used to not being able to not paying like five dollars, six dollars for just a cup of coffee. But besides that, New York is beyond one of the like best experiences like i feel like I've, i feel like i was blessed to be there because there's so many different people that you interact with on a daily basis that it changes your perspective on how you approach things because you you're never coming at every place with one singular mindset there's so many different areas each neighborhood is due to like redlining and a lot of different histories there's very segregated neighborhoods but that also means that there's a lot of neighborhoods with so many different cultures um, the neighborhood that I grew up in was predominantly Dominican. I, I am not Dominican, I'm, I'm South Asian, which is why I got very heavily exposed to that type of culture. But you go a couple blocks away and then there's a very large African population. Another couple blocks away, it's a very Puerto Ricanly dense uh, area. So things like that are very different than what I've experienced in other states, and which is why I genuinely really love New York, because you can actually just go to Times Square and see just about every type of race, every type of diversity that you can imagine and still feel like there's some sort of belonging there, which I think is hard to come by in a lot of other states. There's that hustle and bustle that people usually will talk about when it comes to New York, and that's genuine, it's true. There are times during like uh, Christmas, because I used to work in Rockefeller Center, where you cannot walk down the street. But there, there has to be police escorts for, they'll take like 10 to 20 groups of people and walk and take you there, because it's just not possible to walk down the street, because there's just that many people. Which I personally really love. I miss that. I miss um, the f the amount of people that exist in the area. Uh, something about densely populated areas and hustle and bustle makes you makes it like really easy to focus on what you do yourself because it kind of forces you to. It's hard to focus on what eight million people at once. But I think it's a great place to visit once in a while. There's always something to do. There's always a corner store we can get some food at. Your cravings will always be satisfied no matter what. There's something for literally everyone because there are so many people there. And it's just, it's an environment that I think is worth being in once in a while, even if you don't live there, even if, because honestly living there is, is, is insane. You, you get a very small place for an extremely large amount of money just so you can say that, hey, I'm from New York. It's honestly not that much of a brag. The most of the brag is that it's a very, very, very unique experience. And I don't think I'm, I see that anywhere else in the US, but I'm happy to be from there. Um, it's one of my most, like proudest parts of my identity is being from New York and being able to experience um, such a wide diversity of experiences and cultures and being able to understand a lot of different perspectives just by growing up there and living in a place that um, like fosters that type of identity inclusion. Thank you. I'll give it back to Carter. 
Out of the 50 states in the country, New York has by far the highest income inequality. Suburban counties like Nassau, Suffolk, Rockland, and Westchester are some of the wealthiest parts of the country, and these scores of ultra-wealthy people concentrated in Manhattan give the borough the county's highest per capita income despite the significant poverty that exists there as well. It's a place where major disparities exist by neighborhood, and vast low-income housing projects exist not far from the skyscraper top suites of some of America's wealthiest citizens. New York is one of the most diverse states in the US, mostly due to the influence of New York City, although the cities of upstate New York have a large black population. 52% of the state's residents are white, making it not quite a majority minority state. 19.5% of New Yorkers are Latino, the ninth highest percentage of all states. 15% are black, the 13th highest percentage of US states, and the third highest outside of the South. 10% are Asian American, the sixth highest percent in the country, 11% are another race, and 9% are multiracial. Due to the sheer population size and diversity of New York City, it's home to some of the world's largest populations of many different ethnic groups outside their country of origin, as well as some of the largest populations of different racial groups within a city in the United States. The impact of New York's various waves of immigration is visible in the state's population today. 13% of New Yorkers are Italian American, 12% Irish American, and 10% German American. 5.5% are Puerto Rican, 4.4% Dominican American, and 2% Mexican American and Indian American. In addition, the state's home to hundreds of thousands of Chinese, Korean, Polish, Russian, and Arab Americans, and is the largest Greek population in the country. Religiously, the state is also one of the most diverse. 60% of New Yorkers are Christian, just over half of them Catholic, making it one of just four states in the U.S., along with Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and neighboring New Jersey, in which Catholics make up the largest branch of Christianity, a result of the state's large Irish, Italian, Polish, and Puerto Rican population. 2% of New Yorkers are Muslim, twice the national average, and the third highest percentage in the United States. New York is the center of the United States' Jewish community, with 7% of New Yorkers practicing Judaism, more than any other state. In fact, the state has the largest Jewish population on earth outside of Israel. New York City is home to 1.1 million Jewish people, 600,000 of whom live in Brooklyn, and the city has a large Orthodox Jewish population. While 8% of the city's residents practice Judaism, an additional 10% don't practice the faith but are ethnically Jewish, bringing the total percent of New York City residents that are Jewish up to 18%. Today, New York spends more on public schools per student than any other state. It's home to many professional sports teams, eight of which are based out of New York City, which has not one but two professional hockey, basketball, baseball, and football teams. Some of the city's sports teams even have regional fan bases within the city. In the NBA, New York has the New York Knicks, based out of Manhattan, and the Brooklyn Nets, which represent Brooklyn, where most of their fan base lives. The New York Giants and New York Jets, the city's NFL teams, both play out of the MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, but represent New York City. New York City has two MLB teams, the Mets, which play in Queens, and the Yankees, who baseball great Babe Ruth played for out of the Bronx. The National Baseball Hall of Fame is located upstate in Cooperstown. The city also has two NHL teams, Manhattan's New York Rangers and the New York Islanders based in the Long Island suburb of Elmont, who represent Long Island. New York also has two professional sports teams outside of New York City, both in Buffalo, a football team, the Buffalo Bills, and a hockey team, the Buffalo Sabres. New York has a massive impact on the US and global media. The state is home to several of the nation's most prominent newspapers, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Major tabloids like the New York Post and the New York Daily News are based out of New York as well. In addition, Gannett, which owns thousands of local newspapers and is now based out of Virginia, started off as a small paper near Rochester that began acquiring its competitors. Other major media companies such as Time Warner, the Associated Press, News Corp, Bloomberg, Hearst, Viacom, and NBC Universal are headquartered in the city, as are the country's largest cable channels such as CNN, Fox, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, HBO, and so on. Politically, the state leans strongly towards the Democratic Party. The Cook Partisan Voting Index rates it D plus 10, which means that in a given year, the Democratic Party performs about 10% better in New York than in the country on average, making it one of the most Democratic-leaning states in the country. Many New York politicians have played a major role in American history, typically upstate New York and some of the wealthier suburban and residential areas like Long Island and Staten Island are conservative, whereas New York City itself is much more liberal, though it has elected Republican mayors in the past such as Rudy Giuliani and Michael Bloomberg who later switched parties. Five presidents were born in New York, the third most of any state. 
Martin Van Buren and Millard Fillmore were both New York governors before serving as vice president, and Presidents Theodore and Franklin Roosevelt both came from a wealthy New York family descended from Dutch colonists. In addition, Presidents Chester Arthur and Grover Cleveland both lived in the state and centered their political careers there. Al Smith, the former governor, was the first Catholic major party nominee for president, and Robert F. Kennedy, JFK's brother, represented New York in the Senate before he was assassinated while running for president. In the 2016 election, both major party nominees were from New York. Hillary Clinton, who lived in the Westchester suburbs, had represented the state in the Senate before serving as Secretary of State, and Donald Trump, who became the fifth president from the state, was originally from Queens and had been a wealthy Manhattan developer and reality TV star. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a major figure in the modern progressive wing of the Democratic Party, is a congresswoman representing a district in Queens and the Bronx, and Chuck Schumer, the current Senate Majority Leader, represents the state and the Senate alongside Kirsten Gillibrand. Both are Democrats, as is the governor, Kathy Hochul, who took over following Governor Andrew Cuomo's recent resignation. That is it for New York. It was long, I hope not too long, but I didn't want to leave too much out. With some states, especially those with larger populations, I'll simply have more to cover than others, so the length of these videos will range somewhat. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content and shoutouts in my videos, such as this. Please be sure to check out the TII store, where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official That Is Interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks made by Champion, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. One of the products that I'm most excited about are these limited edition framed state prints that commemorate each video in the US Explained. These are available as soon as the corresponding US Explained video is uploaded, but only 10 of each will be released, so make sure to buy one before they go out of stock. Right now, you'll be able to buy a New York State print, so please click the link in the description and go pay a visit to the TII store. Also, please subscribe to my brother's channel, Quinn the Cameraman. He made the great intro at the beginning of this video that I'll use in all the US Explained videos, so go show him some support. I tried to be pretty thorough with this video, but I know there was definitely things I missed, as there was a lot to talk about. I want to give a big thank you to everyone from New York who helped give me information for this video, leaving detailed and informative comments on YouTube as well as Discord. I truly would not have been able to make this video without all your help. My next video in the series will be on North Carolina, and I've never been there, so I'll need all the help I can get. If you're from North Carolina, please respond to my community post or my comment here, or leave something in the Discord server to let me know what you'd like to see included about your home state. I really appreciate the well over 400 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information about upcoming states in the series. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.